Okay, so uh, we'll continue our discussion on news vendor problem and then we'll move on to uh, multi-state stochastic programming. Uh, you know, many of your uh, students, many of the students in the class, they have looked into multi-state stochastic programming probably because uh, they were, they work in power systems area and, and their multi-state stochastic programming is really important. Uh, news vendor problem okay so the problem is to minimize the expected cost of cx minus py of omega minus r z of omega so where x is in r uh, p is strictly greater than C is strictly greater than R and then I also have this constraint that Y of Omega plus Z of Omega is less than equal to X okay and what we have learned so far in the theory of in the theory of dynamic optimization problem is that if we have a two stage problem then we need to solve the last stage first and then we need to solve the first stage problem so the stage two problem is to minimize minus p y of omega so i'm going to collect all the terms that depend on omega okay because there are two stages and omega gets realized in the second stage so minus p of y of omega minus r of z omega uh, and this is over y of omega and z of omega okay so this is my stage 2 problem and I am going to store the value as q as a function of x comma omega uh, but if you do not like q you can just put uh, the value function v v2 uh, let me just use v2 May, that's fine we'll we'll keep uh, the notation as similar but this is the value function at stage 2 given that at stage 1 you had taken this action x and omega which is the uncertainty realized in stage 2 and what we had mentioned in the previous class is y star of omega equals minimum omega comma x okay and z of omega equals maximum uh, x minus omega comma 0 z star of omega okay now the important thing to note here is that if if r was equal to 0 if r was equal to 0 so I am assuming r is strictly greater than 0 if r was equal to 0 then what should the z star of omega be what should be the value of z star omega if r is equal to 0 okay so this term is not participating in the optimization problem in which case z star omega could be any number between x minus omega and 0 okay so in this particular case since r is strictly positive you have all the incentive to return the newspapers okay return the newspapers and get at least r multiplied by z amount of money back uh, rather than just uh, throw away the newspaper but if r is equal to 0 you can just throw away the newspaper if r is negative then also you will throw away the newspaper yes right so so his point his question Danny's question is why shouldn't y plus z equal to x is that right uh, that's what I'm saying so if r is equal to 0 or if r was negative you wouldn't want to return any newspaper okay in which case 
y of omega plus z of omega would be less than or equal to x because z of omega might be 0 or z of omega might be yeah it can either be 0 or it can be positive it can't take a negative value in fact i should i should write that y of omega and z of omega is greater than or equal to 0 yeah okay so that's the constraint both of these variables have to be non negative um you know the way to think about it uh, so this is a two stage stochastic program uh, it even though we have introduced it in the context of a news vendor problem uh, this problem is 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 true in many scenarios so think of it this way let's say you are a processed food manufacturer you make cans of i don't know tomatoes or artichoke or whatever um and you don't know how many people are going to buy your canned product okay but at the beginning of the year you have to make a decision about how many canned products you want to manufacture in this particular year in this particular financial year and then at the end of the year people some people will buy a product and you will have some leftover canned product in the stores and you have to decide whether you want to get all the canned products back to your factory for i don't know doing something or you can throw it away you can ask the store managers to throw it away and uh, and not get it back so in that case remember that if you want to so there are canned products on on the shelf let's say in walmart there are canned products on the shelf you have to pick them up you have to put it in a truck you have to take the truck all the way to the manufacturing plant that's a lot of cost involved okay because there is there's so many walmarts you know even in hawaii there is walmart okay so you have to put the thing on a ship get it back to continental united states and then you will have to ship it all the way to the factory i mean it's a lot of cost okay so in that case r is negative okay r is not positive in which case what you what would you say you will just ask them to throw away the product you know let's just put it in the sea i mean feed it to dolphins or whatever okay <laughs> so so that's why i mean in this case i have assumed that p is greater than c is greater than r is greater than 0 but that's not always the case okay sometimes it might just be in your best interest because you are solving this optimization problem to just throw away the stuff in fact in your assignment you are trying to solve a problem uh, about uh, this demand uncertainty how do you manufacture under demand uncertainty and what you are going to see in that problem is that if the revenue from selling your product is higher you would prefer to throw away the product throw away the unsold inventory rather than not manufacture it at the first place okay and that's the reason why in united states about 40 to 50% of the food that is produced is thrown away uh, in the landfill okay so it never gets utilized um and the reason for that is the revenue uh i mean part of the reason and that's my reason okay it may not be true in general but nobody has done a study why this is the case okay but my personal opinion is that it takes uh, the the revenue from the food is much higher therefore people or rather the cost of the food is is very low therefore people buy it and then whatever they don't need they just throw it at the end of the day okay so the restaurants will buy food and they'll throw whatever they don't need by the end of the day okay so that's the reason why uh we see so much of wastage in uh, in the us and that's true for many other countries as well but in the us it's it's really very large i mean you can imagine 50% of the food gets wasted i mean maybe 50% is an overstatement but 40% is kind of an understatement okay so 40% of the food that is produced in the us gets wasted it goes to the landfill doesn't get consumed so that's really bad uh for both the economy as well as for the uh for the environment but, that, but that's what the situation is uh so anyways that was a detour but as you can see news vendor problem is not necessarily a problem with the news vendors it's really a problem that industries face on a day to day basis uh in in power markets in electricity market uh this omega would be the amount of renewable generation tomorrow okay so you have to deal with how much renewable will be generated tomorrow and based on that you are going to ask the generators to generate certain amount of electricity uh um, today okay so you will tell them that tomorrow you are going to produce this much amount of electricity okay but there is some uncertainty about wind generation and solar generation and so on um so you have to take that into account when you are deciding 
how much electricity would each generator generate tomorrow. Okay, so I talked about electricity market, I talked about restaurant industry, subway, uh, I don't know, Pizza Hut, uh, what else? Uh, canned food product manufacturers. Uh, so all these people, they, uh, they face a similar problem. In fact, this, this general model is true for any market with perishable product. Okay, so what are perishable products? Well, news is a perishable product, okay? So the news that is generated today is an old news tomorrow, and therefore the news has perished, basically. Uh, medicine, food, in fact, most of the canned foods also have expiry date, okay? Uh, what else, juices? All of them perish after some time, okay? I mean, even though you might think that perishable means it should perish by the end of the day or by the end of the week, but actually it's true for, even if something perishes in a year, it's still a perishable product, okay? It's not going to stay. Metals, for instance, are not perishable, okay? So the metals that you produce today, you can sell it one year later, two year later, 20 year later, there's no expiry date with that. So this model is true in any market with perishable product. Um, yeah, any questions about that? That was a slight detour. I wanted to show you what, which all areas you can apply this particular theory in. Um, especially those of you who might become entrepreneur and uh, you know donate lo large sum of money to OSU in the future, <laughs> you might probably be working in one of these industries in the future. So. Hopefully this will be useful. Okay, so this is stage two problem. I figured out what the optimal solution to stage two problem looks like. Uh, this x should actually be greater than, greater than equal to zero. So I solve the problem. Now I need to, so in the first stage, I have to decide on x, but I don't know what omega is. So what I'll do is take the expected value. So stage one problem is, stage one problem is I want to minimize x greater than or equal to zero, cx plus expected value of q x omega. Okay, where the expectation is taken with respect to omega, so this is purely a function of x, and I add it to a linear function of x, so uh, it turns out to be a convex function of x. So this is a convex in x. Okay. How should we solve it? Well, we know that it's a convex problem, so what do we have to do? Take the derivative, right? So before we take the derivative, let's look at the expression for expected value of Q of X comma omega. So my Q of x comma omega is actually minus p min of omega comma x minus r max of x minus omega comma zero. Okay. Now I need to find the expected value.
okay so this horrible looking expression is the expected value of q of x comma omega remember we need to differentiate it with respect to x so we need to uh, come up with a more benign looking expression not this ugly expression so what should we do okay think about how would you compute this integral um, knowing that Warren Buffet solved this integral in 1940 okay so how would you solve this integral Okay. Any thoughts? What should I do? So I want to solve this problem. P is a constant, X is a constant, R is a constant. Okay. Uh, what should I do? Well, I can write the first integral. You know, let's let's do each of these integrals separately. So, integral of Oh yes, there is. There is. Thank you. Okay. So, let's look at the first integral minus infinity to infinity minus p that's a constant I can just keep it out of the integral I have minimum of omega comma x g omega d omega that's equal to what should I do sorry minus infinity to x and then what is in between minus infinity to x what is min of omega comma x well that's equal to omega Okay, what about the other case? Minus p integral x to infinity and min of omega comma x, that's equal to x g omega d omega. So this is the expected value given that the number of customers who arrive is less than equal to x this is the expected value given that the number of customers who arrive is greater than x. Okay. How should I solve this problem? So, well, I'm going to use integration by parts, okay, uh, which I hope all of you are familiar with that is equal to omega g omega no omega integral minus infinity to x g omega d omega x minus infinity plus no I want to get rid of omega so all I have to do is uh, this is fine and then I have to take differentiation with respect to omega right that's what I have to do so that's minus infinity to x g of omega d of omega okay because the different differentiation with respect to omega is equal to 1 so d omega over d omega is equal to 1 so this is what I get 
as the expression. So that's equal to x f of x minus zero plus f of x. Uh, does anyone remember whether this should be plus or negative? Negative. negative? Okay. Negative. So I expected you guys would know integration by part, but it seems like I myself have forgotten integration by parts. Okay. So one expression is uh, simplified. Uh, that's good. This part, what is this part equal to? Well, uh, I have integral of x g omega d omega from x to plus infinity is equal to x 1 minus f of x. Okay, so I have to collect both the terms together. So I have minus p. Okay, I'm going to erase this part, but I'll let everyone write it. And then I'll erase this part. I need the space. Or actually, I can just write it here. So this is minus p. And then I have x f x minus plus x minus x f x. Okay, so that's the first integral. I still need to find the second integral. Okay, so this gets cancelled with this one. Okay, everyone has noted this part down? Any questions so far on this integral? No. Okay, I still need to compute what this integral is, so I've left the space for that. Let's go back and try to work on that integral. And I'll also do the same thing, I'll split it into two parts. So I have max of x minus omega comma 0 Okay, so I have the same thing here. I have x x multiplied by f of x minus okay. So I get this expression. Again, I have to do integration by parts for this this side. So what would this expression be? I have omega integral g omega d omega minus infinity and x. 
and plus integral okay So I get the same thing x fx minus x fx plus fx. Okay, any problem so far? I hope I haven't made any mistakes because uh, because I think this is this is the correct expression and this is equal to f of x. That should be fine. Okay, so what do I have? Well, this term cancels with this term. And then all I'm left with is f of x. So minus r f of x. OK, any questions so far? Okay, so let's uh, collect all the terms together. I get minus p plus r. No, p minus r f of x minus p x. Okay, so we went from this ugly expression to something that looks much more of easier to tackle. Any question so far? So my Cx plus Q of x comma omega, no, not expected value of x You know, I feel that something is missing in the expression. I feel that there should be an x there. Maybe no. Did I make a mistake somewhere in the calculation? No? OK. So this is my first stage objective function. OK. and. Uh, let me write it as a function of x. So let's say f of x equal to. And it turns out that f of x is a convex function of x. Um, so that's a very good property to have. So the first order necessary condition, which is also sufficient, says that f prime of x star is, should be equal to 0, which means C minus P plus P minus R, G of X should be equal to 0.
where am I doing? I am making a mistake somewhere. Can someone tell me where am I making a mistake? That's not the right answer. Okay, the right answer should be I should have a f of x here instead of g of x. That yeah. So uh, x should be greater than zero, so I think we should not integrate from minus infinity. No, the g of omega will be equal to zero all the way from minus infinity to zero. G of omega is the density function. So the density function itself is going to be equal to zero all the way up to zero. So in this case, I'll have a double integral. The second, the second term. Oh, this one? Yeah, I think the Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, no, I don't think so. So I did the so th this is the this is the term that I did integration by parts, right? Yeah. So so I have omega integral of g of omega d omega from minus infinity to x. So so the first integral is minus infinity to x. What is the second integral? Oh, this way, and this will be minus infinity to x. Is that what you're saying? Well, you know, I haven't uh, written, I thought that this integration by parts would be easy, <laughs> but it doesn't seem it is. Yeah. No, the second term, there is no problem with the second term. That's x1 minus f of x. Okay, so that was a fairly simple integration. Minus the x2 infinity x g omega. Right, right. So there, how are we that? So integral of g of omega d omega from x2 plus infinity is 1 minus f of x. So I have minus p x multiplied by 1 minus fx. Okay, so that part is, this part I am completely confident. My calculus skills are not that bad. Okay, <laughs> it is this part where I am in real trouble. That's right. So that's x multiplied by fx. Minus minus infinity multiplied by zero, so that's zero. Yeah. So I have x f x here, and then it's this term that I'm. Uh, oh, I see what. Okay. That's right. So this should be f of omega d omega. This is what it should be. Okay, because the integral of g of omega d omega is f of omega. Okay, so f of omega d omega. So that's the problem. Okay, we fixed it. Uh, uh, yeah, you have to take the limit and the limit will be equal to zero. Remember, because from minus infinity to zero, g of omega is equal to zero. So if you take any value of omega less than zero, let's say minus one, then this integral is zero and this is minus one, so you get minus one zero, minus two zero, minus three zero, you take the limit, it becomes equal to zero. Okay, so there is an update, so this is, this is what it should be. I mean, I apologize for the mistake. So this is exactly what the integral should be, the second part of the integral should be because 
you are integrating integral of g of omega d omega here. Okay. Uh, so what I have here is so this. There should be some update to this equation. So this should be integral minus infinity to x f of omega d omega plus what am I lo what am I missing right now? So that's fine. And then I have minus what am I missing right now? Oh, this should be minus infinity to x f of omega d omega. So I have p minus r integral minus px. Okay, so now this is fixed. So I have C minus Px plus P minus R integral minus infinity to x f of omega d omega. Yeah. Where? Oh, I see. Okay. Well, f of omega is also 0 all the way up to 0. Doesn't matter. Yeah. It's the same thing. Okay. So this is what I have. As I mentioned, f of x is f is convex function. So I need gradient of f at x star equal to 0. And that's equal to c minus p plus p minus r f of x should be equal to 0. And that implies, oh, f of x star is equal to 0. And this implies f of x star is p minus c over p minus r. Okay, that's what I get. Okay, so this gives me the value of x star, uh, which is f inverse of p minus c over p minus r. So depending upon what the selling price is, what the cost price is, and what the return price is, you can figure out how much newspapers you need to buy at the beginning of the at the beginning of the day in the morning. Okay, this will maximize your expected profit. Uh, on an everyday basis. Any questions about this? Yeah. Expected profit. Expected profit. So if you buy if you buy X star, so assume that the distribution doesn't change over time. So even if some election is happening, the same number of people would buy the newspapers, okay, there's, there's no difference in statistics across time. If you buy X star amount of newspaper every day and you sell it and return it and sell it and return it, some days you will sell more, some days you will sell less. But if you look at a long period of time, the expected average profit that you will get is maximized. Safety 
factor incorporated into that? Because That's right. That's right. That's right. So in so if you think about it from the electricity market perspective, so X star would be the amount you will schedule for the generators to generate tomorrow. Okay, so you will tell this generator that there's a nuclear power plant, you will tell him tomorrow you are going to generate X star amount of electricity throughout the day. Okay. Uh, now depending upon how much the renewables was generated, renewables are self-scheduled in the US. Okay, so their electricity has to be utilized by the electricity, uh, the power distribution companies by law. Okay, so they are self-scheduled. Uh, so the other generators, you will tell them to generate electricity according to Y star of omega and Z star of omega to meet the demand. Okay, and of course, those, those generators that can go up and down very rapidly, uh, they are extremely expensive, much more expensive than the nuclear generator or hydropower plant and so on. Okay, so you're trying to minimize your expected cost. There is some uncertainty that you're going to see in the future, but if you play that game on an everyday basis, you will eventually, the average reward or average profit is going to be the expected profit. Okay, so uh, you will essentially save, uh, not save, but you will be optimal given that you don't know some information that's going to appear in the future. Okay, uh, in, in business, in many cases, you might not have the information, but through some sort of data analysis or asking the customer or doing some survey, you can actually extract that information. And that's called value of information. So the value of information is the expected cost, uh, if you knew the information, minus the expected cost without the information. Okay, so, uh, so the, what the companies will say, you know, I think the value of information is $100,000 uh, and we can get this survey done in $50,000. Okay, we'll have the volunteers go and ask each and every one, what do you want to buy and so on. Okay, and that will reduce the, uh, the value, I mean, that will improve the overall payoff of the company. In fact, if you go to Kroger or Giant Eagle or whatever, no matter which store you go to, They'll all ask you to scan your whatever card or something, right? So they are extracting information from you. They are learning from your habits. They are extracting information from you. And then they'll stock appropriate amount of uh, things on their shelves uh, so that they don't have to spend a lot of time in warehousing and whatever, in transportation and all that. Okay? So whenever you swipe your, I don't know, loyalty card or something, you're essentially giving them some information about your yourself, which is not bad, you know, it's reducing the carbon emissions, CO2 emissions and so on, because they are able to optimize their supply chain based on information of every individual. Okay, so that's the value of information in business. Any other question? Okay. So this was a two-stage problem. Uh, this was a problem that studied the market for perishable good a product that perishes by the end of the day or by the end of the season. Um, you can have a multi-stage problem. So electricity markets are typically 24-stage problems. So they run the optimization problem for every hour uh, for the entire 24-hour day. So you have this huge stochastic problem with 24 stages. So how would you solve a 24-stage stochastic program, or rather T-stage stochastic program, a general multi-state stochastic program. So the idea is, again, going back to dynamic programming, you always solve the last stage, go back one stage, go back one stage, keep track of value functions, and uh, keep taking expectations, and you will get the answer. So let's see what, how do you decompose it very quickly. And this is the last thing that is that will be on the final exam. And next week I'll talk about Markov decision problems and uh, I don't know, value iteration or something. Okay, so that's completely optional. If you want to study, you can come to the class. If you don't want to study, enjoy. Okay. Uh, and then the last week, which is December 4th and 6th, I will do the review okay, for the entire course. So on Monday, I'll do the review for static optimization, and on Wednesday, I'll do the review for dynamic optimization. 
okay those are the two last cl final classes of this semester so you have you want to minimize xt of omega 1 to omega t uh, the expected value of c summation c t transpose x t omega 1 to omega t t equals 1 to capital T and you have some constraints let us say w of t summation w Okay, you have this is a general, sufficiently general uh, multi state stochastic program. Okay, so at every point of time you learn omega t. Okay, so at time t you learn omega t. So at time 1 you learn omega 1, but you do not know omega 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to omega t. At time 2 you know omega 1 and omega 2, but you do not know omega 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. So, how would you solve this problem? Well, you define your stage capital T problem which will treat every other xt to be given except the final stage xt. So there you minimize x capital T omega uh, c capital T x capital T such that summation w s t x s plus Okay, and you solve this problem and you store as a value function given x1 to xt minus 1 and omega t. Okay, you store this and then you add it at the expected value at time t minus 1 at stage t minus 1 problem and you follow the usual dynamic programming approach just like we did in the news vendor problem. Okay, so this is the stage T problem. So I'm going to treat these Xs as given, okay, because that's something you have already done in the past at the final time, capital T. So these are given, and this is the only optimization variable that you need to solve, okay? And you have, of course, learned omega T at the final time state, so that's something that's known. In fact, the entire trajectory of omega is known at the final time. Okay. Um, so in your homework you again have to solve a two stage stochastic program. It is a restaurant problem, the problem that every restaurant and subway solves on a daily basis. So that is the problem you are solving in your, in your assignment and that is it. This is all you need to know for the final exam. And then, of course, we'll do uh, more advanced dynamic optimization in the subsequent classes. And uh, there is no class on December first. Okay, I'll be out of the town on that day. So uh, use that time to work on the project if you have to. Otherwise, just enjoy a holiday. Okay, this has been a tough, difficult semester, right? So you need the break. All right, thank you guys. I'll see you on. Uh, enjoy your Thanksgiving. I'll see you guys next week.